بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله the question was asked السلام عليكم uh, brother Khalid may Allah bless you and increase you in beneficial knowledge and risk and protect your iman your family and your health آمين يا رب العالمين وإياكم uh, I recently started watching some of your videos and I came to know that you are studying about Aqidah academically. I like your balanced approach on matters that are stirring up the Salafi community, especially in the UK. I have a question that is about Aqidah, specifically about the Khawarij. There's a free booklet on the internet in the English language called What You Must Know About Your Creator. In it are quotes from Sheikh bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, explanation of the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salam, and excerpts from the Aqidah Aqidah to Tawheed from Sheikh Salim bin Fozan, Hafidullah Ta'ala. In it, when talking about two misguided groups in the issue of Ibadah, uh, it is page 41 in the booklet, it is translated that Sheikh uh, Fozan writes in Aqidah to Tawheed, the second group overstressed in implementing worship to the extent of exaggeration. They raise the mustahab, the recommended actions, to the level of wajib, obligatory and prohibited some mubah, some permissible actions, and declared deviant and mistaken those people who disagreed with their menhaj or their way, and proved their understanding to be incorrect. I understand them to be the Khawarij. Am I correct in that? And could you please give me a few examples of what they made obligatory, although it was mustahab, and what mubah things they prohibited? If you could give at least one reference from a book for this, it would be even better. But I understand you do not have the time, so it's just a few examples would be enough. I'm working towards translating the booklet in the German language since I found it very beneficial. And I want to give an example so it can be understood properly. I do not have access to the actual English translation of the book, Aqidah to Tawheed. So I do not know whether the Sheikh gives the examples himself. Uh, if you know that, that it would help me very much. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, so, a very big uh, question about uh, this, what Imam Fozan wrote in this book. And unfortunately, I don't have a copy, at least I can't seem to find one in here. I know I have one uh, in my books probably in America, but I don't see one right offhand. But what I did find in a series of his Muhabarat uh, which is fantastic and amazing. And again, I want to advise those who know Arabic, these are free here In uh, if you go to the, um, the Darul Iftah. You know, they'll give you a big collection of books for free. And this is three volumes, and it's just full of so many Risa'il and so much fitna that we deal with now that Imam Fozan has done lectures about. This was printed, well, for... Uh, 2009, so it's actually not as old, and this is the second printing, but some of these lectures probably go back, uh, you know, 15 years or what have you, where the imam was dealing with a lot of the stuff which we are dealing with as fitna now, and but unfortunately, people don't translate and they don't propagate what this great imam, because he's one of the major scholars now of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, so it is not really befitting for someone from Ahlul Sunnah to not look into and refer and benefit from this great imam and to just only hold on to smaller scholars which have great immense benefit but again we should also look at the scale of the major scholars not belittling and not to take away from scholars that are less in knowledge but these rasikhun fil ilm they offer us a type of fiqh and understanding that uh you know we can't do without and so, as you mentioned, I don't, unfortunately, since I don't have the book right at hand, you probably can get it off the internet, and uh, forgive me for my lack of, uh, <laughs> my laziness. And, uh, but yes, as you said, from reading many other statements of the, the sheikh and understanding those sifat, that this is a reference to the Khawarij, so you are correct in that. As far as examples, I can't think of any examples of things that are mubah that they prohibited. But in general, you'll find this trend amongst the Khawarij, whether it be the original Khawarij, and I'll give you an example for that, uh, up to contemporary Tekfiri groups, that they do have some 
uh, uh, obviously similar traits in making tekfir excessively in extremism. And one of the things that they do, as you said, they make the obligatory, uh, although it was mustahab, and what mubah things they prohibited. Thayb. I, I don't know, as I said, the mubah that they prohibited. I, nothing comes to mind right offhand. But as far as making obligatory things that are mustahab, for example, one of the original Khawarij sects, known as the Azariqa, they uh, used to make it an obligation that Hijra was an obligation. Now, we know the scholars in the past, up until now, from Ahlul Sunnah, Wagayra Ahlul Sunnah, uh, when they talk about this issue of Hijra, uh, some of them, and there's a lot of strong evidence to suggest the obligation of making hijra or to leave a non-Muslim land to a Muslim land uh, for residence. And we also know the realities of today. Today's a, a, a quite different and there's a lot of other things you could say about it. It's a big, very big mas'ala, huge, huge mas'ala. One of the things in my view is, as the scholars here, the major, the hayat to kibar ulama, and of course, they didn't just come up with this fatwa themselves. There are those who came before them that uh, basically that there's details in this issue uh, and that uh, the bottom line is it is mustahab in uh, certain circumstances if you're able to practice your religion more or less in the country you reside in, whether it be in a non-Muslim country. So, for example, you're from Germany, someone's from France, someone's from America. The situations are similar, but then they're also different. France is very, uh, very, uh, I forgot the name, you know, it's very, very secular and aggressively secular. So they also, you know, prohibit the niqab and many other things. So, it, you know, it's much more difficult probably to practice your religion in France than it is to, to practice in America, where we have a lot more freedom uh, to, to practice our religion. And likewise, uh, Germany, there may be other, uh, those same trends are also uh, very strong in many European countries. And the push to assimilate is very strong, is much stronger than it is in America. So with that being the case, meaning everything by a case by case basis, you would look into this mas'ala, uh, you know, Ahl uh, al-Ilm, those people, those people of knowledge will look into the mas'ala to derive a hukum, a ruling about that particular ballad or the particular situation of an individual or family or whatever the case may be as far as the hukum for hijrah, okay? So, meaning that if you can practice the your religion as far as you can, you know, uh, practice the signs of Islam, show that you're a Muslim, you can pray five times a day, you can make Jumu'ah and stuff like this, then it is uh, recommended that you make Hijrah just to be in the, um, uh, you know, in the Muslim society and, you know, to make the Muslim numbers bigger and, and so on and so forth. The Azarika, the original, one of the original or early sects of the Khawarij, because the Khawarij, like all the groups, and as the Prophet said, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said the Jews break into 71 uh, sects, Christians 72, uh, 72 sects, and my woman is 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. So we know that the deen, that the groups uh, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would break into groups and sects. So you find that even the uh, those sects, they splintered into other jama'at and other groups. So it's not just simply Khawarij, but you have the Ibadiyya, which is another, they have uh, a different Aqidah than uh, to, uh, you know, a, even a distortion or a uh, mutation of the original Khawarij's uh, Aqidah. And the, the Azarika were some of the most extreme. And they held that if you don't make hijra, until you make hijra, 
that you're a disbeliever and it's reported and you'll find this in uh, the book by Imam Abu Hassan al-Ashari his book Maqalat um, al-Islamiyin uh, and in it he mentions about the Azaraka that they were so extreme that when they if they were residing in a non-Muslim land, they would make takfir of themselves. So they would say, we are disbelievers until we leave this land to the land of the Muslims. And of course, again, they made takfir, so they would make takfir of a, uh, a sinful imam or whatever. So they were so extreme that they would uh, you know, make takfir of themselves until they make hijrah. So that's one example of making the mustahab uh, you know, wajib, and to such an extent that it the extremism leads you to make takfir of yourself. Okay, an example uh, you find the same trend. You find this in uh, in Egypt when the in the appearance of Jamaat takfir wa hijra, they also uh, you know had this very concept that you know here they were living in Egypt, and so since they considered everyone disbelievers, and until that you migrated to their place of residence where they resided in Egypt, and I think it was on a mountain, uh, the leader of Jamaat al-Takfir wa Hijra uh, was uh, Faraj, I think his name was, and, uh, and I've forgotten his name, but anyhow, and they assassinated uh, the president and, and others, and general, uh, a judge, or they kidnapped a judge, and I think they killed him, anyway, the bottom line is, is they were of that. So they made it an obligation, something that might be, in that case, it wasn't even mustahab. It might have been, so it's impermissible to make hijra to a, 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 a mubtadiyah group. So they made the impermissible, even permissible, uh, not just permissible, but an obligation, you know, that it is, it is an obligation, you know. So you see how this trend, and, and likewise, look at uh, in, in contemporary uh, times, you find groups like ISIS, and they also have a similar uh, type of extremism to where they made it an obligation to make hijra and take allegiance, you know, for everyone in the world to make allegiance, every Muslim in the world to make allegiance to their mubtadiyah uh, leader, and make hijra to them, uh, you know, that they made that as a, like, as from a suladin, like this was a wajib, that this is an obligation. They came up with this concept of this muqtadiya to lead, and that everyone should just drop their countries, and drop their residencies, and drop their nationalities, and drop everything, and make hijra to a muqtadiya that drinks the blood of the Muslims, and spills the blood of the Muslims at whim. So you see the danger, you see how these muqtadiyah groups of, of takfir, that their that their usul is tek, takfiri and, and khariji, that they, you know, make the uh, things that are uh, sometimes impermissible. And that the funny thing is that you'll find a great contradiction of the khariji is when they come up with these ahkam often, they often... Uh, rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals. They make takfir of everyone else and say that everyone else is not ruling by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, but then they also do the same because how is it you can make something which is impermissible to make bay'ah to a mubtadiyah imam who just declares, declares himself this and then kills all the Muslims, you know, and, and kills the disbelievers and breaks packs and, you know, all, all the evil that they've done calls people to do suicide attacks, calls people to do lone wolf attacks in Western countries and around the world. They've made the that which is impermissible, permissible. So they've ruled by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, reveal, has revealed. So this, you, you, show, you see the internal contradictions with a lot of these mubtadiyah. And, and even... Uh, to such an extent uh, and deviancy and you see you see the extremism so these are some of the great dangers that you find and I, and I hope that those are some examples we'll look at a statement of Imam Fozan and I'm sorry to have went so long 
But he was asked, and this was over probably 15 years ago, he was asked about what, uh, he was asked about the, about extremism. He said, you know, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uh, prohibited uh, extremism in the religion. And what is the reason for the going astray of these groups away from the belief of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah and to extremism? And what's an example of this group? The Sheikh then replied, and it's in quotes, Al Khawarij. He said, Vahir and a sub of inhirafihim ghulufi deen. He said, the apparent, the, what appears, what it appears, is the reason for their going astray is extremism, is they were extreme. لَأَنَّهُمْ تِشَدِّدُوا فِي الْعِبَادَةِ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِ هَدِي وَبَصِيرًا Because, now listen to this, this is going to deal with some of your questions. Because they تُشَدِّدُوا They were uh, severe and stern and um, extreme in their worship. Worship we know is good. Worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the various ways we're, uh, we're obligated to worship Him, tabarak wa ta'ala, is only good. But there are those from the ummah or who deviated from the ummah or who deviated from the ahl sunnah who deviated from the jama'ah, who were so extreme in their worship. They were worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they went to, to Jawas. Uh, that they did it in a way which was not the guidance of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and it had no, it was not based on knowledge and wisdom and insight. Okay? وَأَطْلَقُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ كُفْرَ عَنْ غَيْرِ بَصِيرًا And they refer to people as disbeliever or call people, to, you know, claim people are disbelievers without knowledge. So this is where the extreme is. That's why you have these Tekfiri figureheads in the West and around the world who thrived and they were just busy making Tekfir of people. Just busy, just like this. Boom, 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 tape after tape, talking about the leaders here, talking about the Muslims all around them, that they're they're this, they're disbelievers, they're murjia, this, they're that, they're this. Just throwing verdicts like nothing. Going just totally violating the principles of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That when it comes to takfir, there's duwabit, there's ahkam, there's uh, there's uh, shurut, there's conditions, there's criterion. You know, there there's there's a, a, a methodology for that. Ahl Sunnah is just not like this because that wasn't what the way of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. Nor was it the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in. That wasn't their way. But the deviant groups that came later, they came up with new ways. And they were extreme. Extreme in one form of belief or another. And so, he says that they would, he, they would claim that the people were disbelievers without insight, without knowledge, without, uh, really without delil. This is exactly ISIS, Daesh, and these groups, they make take fear of you if you don't make hijra to them. And if you cannot make hijra to them, so I'm not making this up. When I say these things, it's because I read it and I studied it. I didn't just read it. It wasn't like one day I picked up a magazine. But I spent the past couple years now looking in their magazines, watching some of their videos, seeing what they what they think. They made takfir. And in, if you don't make a lone wolf attack, this was the way you could support their vision, their distortion. Their deviance and their evil. This is the way you could support it by doing lone wolf attacks, by using a vehicle to drive into old ladies, by stabbing old men in the park. Even the, as he said, literally, this is a, a, a paraphrase, even the, um, the vendor selling hot dogs in the park. That's from, a, from their magazine. I have the direct quote and I've mentioned it in other videos. So it shows you how extreme, how that extremism, the dangers of it, and that the Khawarij, the, these contemporary Khawarij, they are just, uh, they are extreme to the point of lunacy. 
lunas, uh, being like lunatics, wild, bloodthirsty lunatics. Where is the Islam in that? Well, I'm sad. And they make dis, they call all the Muslims to be disbelievers. Every day I'm getting, people make takfir of me every day from the supporters of Faisal, a major takfiri in the West. Okay? They can't accept that he makes it fear. It's like you give the evidence. I give you the page number of the deviance and the evil that he exports around the world. And they say you didn't bring evidence. You didn't understand what he said. You're lying. This is amazing. So when someone is ghafla, when someone is, their heart is hard, their, 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 their eyes are covered. Because Allah doesn't want, whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives them understanding of the religion. This is what the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi said. People have no understanding because they're taqlid, they're blind following. It's like trying to convince a Trump supporter that the guy has serious issues. They can't see it. They can turn evil, an evil statement. He can make a statement about racism and they can say, well, you know, what he meant by black people are like animals is... Oh, what he really meant by the the horrible nations, the, the term he used to call, describe nation, what he meant by Mexicans being um, uh, rapists and this, he meant, subhanAllah, they make ta'wil batil. What do they say with Faisal and these other tekfiris? They defend them on batil, on ta'wil gharib jiddin. We don't know where this came from. And it surely doesn't come from Islam. Nor does it come from the minhaj or methodology of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. Abadan. Taib. Those are probably the important things that we want to mention. And we'll men end with a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I hope this answered your question a bit. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, Iyakum wal ghulu fa innama ahlaka man kana kablakum al ghulu. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, Beware of ghulu. Beware of extremism. For verily what destroyed those people who came before you is ghulu, is extremism. And subhanAllah, I know so many tekfiris that were just hardcore tekfiris that are now agents. And two major ones that I know, that they, they became agents, they became... Uh... One is definitely he left Islam. The other... I, look, I saw him recently on the internet and I was just shocked. I mean, I don't know if he's still Muslim or not. I don't know. But it just goes to show you the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam statement, فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكْ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ غَلُو Verily what destroyed those who came before you was غلو. And this goes to not just takfir, even tabdir. Those people who just make tabdir like this, oh, you didn't agree with our sheikh? Sheikh so-and-so just made a fatwa about five other mashayikh and you don't accept it? You don't just all of a sudden knock them off because yesterday you were taken from them. You got to cut them off now. Just like this. Boom, boom, boom. Mubtadiyah, mubtadiyah, mubtadiyah. Ghulu. Extremism. And we know people who are severe in their tibdiyah. And some of them aren't even Muslim anymore. Because they were so extreme. They, they thought they were on the, the sunnah. They thought. And they were so extreme, and they were so, you know, everyone's mubtadiyah, and you better come to the Sheikh Stars, and we didn't see you here, and we saw you give salams to this one, we knocked on the door in this one, and you, uh, you, you, you were in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's masjid, and you, you shook hands with so-and-so, and you sat in the corner of the dars with those guys. We saw you in the dars of Sheikh Abu Bakr Jazairi, we saw you in the dars of, uh, you know, Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so, subhanAllah, ghalu. And this destroys people. And that's why Ahl Sunnah is balanced and always has to go back to that. That's the the of Ahl Sunnah. And may Allah bless us to be from amongst them.